well. Thank you for clicking on my video. If it's the first time you are on my channel, welcome. Don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment. I will really appreciate it. So today's topic is about, so I know that during the holidays, it can be a little difficult because you know, can get lonely sometimes. And with COVID and how this year has been, I don't think that is going to get easier. And it's something that has been weighing so, 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 so heavy on my heart. And I think that it's good for us to be prepared, um, to, be, to be prepared with some information, whether it's for yourself or for others that may be going through it and, you may not know what signs to look for or you know how to assist them so i know I'll, i i am speaking from experience i remember when and sometimes it doesn't even like you do it, it doesn't really take much for you to help or help that person so me recording this video is because like i went through um I went through a time that I was more like depressed around Christmas because so I'll give you I'll explain you guys the story so first I was living in the states and I was basically living on my own for a while and when I returned home things changed and things that I used to do prior to coming to the states um we were no longer doing it for that for example my friends were working and how I used to spend Christmas was no longer like that and for on Christmas I wasn't even really thinking about the like Christmas coming up and how it would affect me I just saw it as you know Christmas you know food and I'm I just I'm just planning to be home and stuff so on that day though I woke up I was happy you know it's Christmas I called my friends and texted them told them happy merry christmas and during that day i'm like dang i my mom didn't cook which i didn't really make a big deal out of it yes i can cook but usually she does the cooking during christmas is only me and she decided not to cook i was like okay fine you don't want to cook it's okay but deep down i did really want her to cook but she didn't but anywho, so on that day um i just stayed in bed the whole day my parents had like two bottles of wines. I stayed in bed the entire, well, stayed. Well, I, I was basically a couch potato. I drank two bottles of wines. I was just in my feelings. Like I wasn't happy. I was just going through it. And one of my friends, she called me and she was like, you know, Merry Christmas. What are you doing with your day? I was like, nothing. I'm just going to be home and stuff. And yeah. So she hung up on um, the days, the day that was like probably early in the morning. And the day went by, you know, just sipping on my wine and I wasn't intoxicated, but I was like just drinking for drinking sake. And I heard a knock on my door like around four or five in the afternoon. And when I peeped and I and, and I peeped out the window and I saw it was her, she came with a plate of food. And she had her nephew with me. I was like, oh my gosh, um, thank you so much. Like I wasn't expecting you to come. Like I wasn't expecting anyone. She was like, yeah, um, mommy cooked. And I said, let me bring a plate for you. So she brought the plate. She gave me a plate. She gave me a Christmas card and her nephew gave me cook and um, a Coke soda. <laughs> and I was like, you know, that really touched me. After she left, I tear it up. I tear it up because, you know, there's... I tear it up because it wasn't how it used to be. And it was lonely for me at that time. My parents wasn't home. They're usually not home, but um, it was just different compared to how it used to be. And for some, for many, COVID may have caused it to not be the same for you this year around, and which may cause it not to be easy. COVID has been, and the only way I can describe it is crazy crazy as in like it's nothing that we expected it to be some may not be able to spend it with their family some may not be able to travel because of all of those restrictions that we have and you know it, it can get lonely i'm going to go through a slide that shows that speaks on the signs that you can look for 
going through depression, um, if you were the one, if you are a person that may be going through it, or if you are a person that may notice someone going through it, you would know more or less what to look for. This presentation, the slide is not for me. I didn't create it. I didn't make it. It was a presentation that was made by Miss McDonald. She was invited by in one of she's she is a intervarsity staff that came to do a talk with the small group leaders from intervarsity that um, about mental health and the signs and you know different things to look at or how to cope on how to deal in regards to mental health. So I'll just go through a few slides from her presentation that I am presenting to you. I mean, if you have the knowledge, you gotta give it because sometimes. People just don't know and mental health is something that is so important and people and, we, and it's still something taboo like we don't really talk about the things that we're going through and I find it so important for us to recognize the signs and know how to deal with it and seek help where it is needed especially during these times and sometimes you are not able to do it on your own as much as I love God and I do believe that God can and can save us from all of our from these things he also gave people the gift the gift to do certain things so it's not for you to go um you know pray 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 about it and not seek help like we have the resources available seek it you know and i know for me here most of the people that watch my videos would most likely be from st martin we do have mental health um, available. And every time when you tell, I used to work there. So whenever I tell anyone that I, whenever I used to tell anyone that I was working there, it was like, oh, you're working with the crazy people. No, you need to stop saying that because it could be any one of us. It could have been me in there. There's different things that can trigger you to have a mental breakdown, a mental illness. So like, don't take it lightly. And I, uh, you need to stop making them jokes. And yeah, so ignorance ain't cute, ain't cute, especially when it's, it's something serious. If you are sick, like physically, you go to the doctor. So if you have a mental problem, a mental illness, you should seek help for it as well. And it's something that's, that helps you function. So why wouldn't you seek help? You know, so that was my little rant. So we'll go into the slide. I'm going to share my screen. There we go. Okay. Depression. So here they have basically signs of depression. I'll just read through it. I might not do all, but you will have the slide visible. So you can, or maybe you can pause it throughout the video, but Signs is like persistent anxious, um, persist, persistent sadness, anxious, empty mood, feelings of hopelessness, pessimism, feelings, feelings of guilt, worthlessness, helplessness, loss of interest or pleasures in hobbies and activities, decreased energy, fatigue, being slowed down, difficulty concentrating, remembering, making decisions, difficulty sleeping, early morning awakening, oversleeping, appetite, and unwanted weight changes, restlessness, irritability, persistent physical symptoms such as muscle pain or headaches, thoughts of death or suicide, suicide attempts. So from I'll interject and talk about my experience in depression. I don't have no problem talking about my experience because you gotta talk about it. That's normalized talking about these things. For me, when I was going through my depression, it was... I was feeling feelings of hopelessness. I was very pessimistic. Oh my gosh. Like I wouldn't even want to be around me like during that time. It was hard. And for those that may be around someone like that, don't leave that push you away. In a sense, like still show that you care, but also take the time to take care of yourself. Like recharge yourself before you come back and try and be of, a, of an assistant of an un assistant to that person because it can be draining. I know for me, I was drained. So I could only imagine how it is to be around someone that is just like, 
I don't want to do nothing. I didn't want to do this. I didn't want, like, I did not want to do anything. All I wanted to do was sleep. I felt anxiety every time I had to do schoolwork. I wasn't looking at my grades or anything like that. So I was just existing, to be honest. That was with me. Lost interest or pleasure in hobbies and activities. Um, that wasn't really a thing for me, but kind of. I, I just really wanted to sleep and just be home and not be around anyone for the most part. And when I was around people, my energy, my energy was off and it's like, nobody want to be around me. It was, it was a whole thing. It's not a nice place to be. And some people, even if they're going through it, you're not, you're not, they're good at masking it with that. Just be kind because sometimes you don't know. Um, so risk of suicide is the follow-up slide. If the person had prior suicide attempt, depression or other mental health disorder, substance abuse, substance abuse disorder, family history of mental health or substance abuse disorder, family history of suicide, family violence, including physical or sexual abuse, having guns or other firearm in the home, being in prison or jail or being exposed to other suicidal behaviors such as family members, peers, or media figure, medical illness, being between the ages of 15 and 24 years or over the age of 60. So the last part is what I'm going to emphasize on, right? Okay, so suicide has no age it doesn't it doesn't discriminate so it's between here it has 15 and 24 or the um, over the age of 60. recently um we had and this is something that is very sensitive and i'm going to try my best to be very respectful of what um occurred back home and the reason what i'm bringing it why i'm bringing it up is because like we all know what happened but we still haven't spoken about it not that we have to be talking about um the person but like what what are we doing in order for us to try and prevent it from happening like just being more not knowledgeable about it and not just talking about mental health when is mental health month you know one of our teachers back home god rest her soul she committed suicide and it's very it's it, it it touches because a lot of times when you hear things like that the first thing that people say is that oh I did not know that she was going through something like that she was always smiling she you know this person always had like a happy person uh, like a happy um persona you know and it goes to show that people and it doesn't even matter like the age because like you went through your life and you know, you have knowledge, you are a smart person, like, you know, and the decision that was made was for that to happen. And it could not have been an easy decision. And for you to make it at 60 must be hard. And also I was made known of a situation here in the States, an 18 year old young guy took his life away. And I'm like, that hurts because you had your whole life ahead of you and this is what happened and his mom is mourning his her son and it's nothing no mom no parent wants to go through a situation like that and anyone that made that decision i don't ever think that going through the process is ever easy you know sometimes they think that okay if i were to do this, then my people won't have to go through it. Oh, the pain is so much that I cannot bear and I, I'd rather not be here anymore. So the next slide is warning signs of suicide, suicidality. We're gonna speak on the talk, the behavior and mood. So the talk is more like, kill, I, you know, kill, they talk about killing themselves, they feel, feeling hopeless, having no reason to live, being burdened, to being a burden to others, feeling trapped, unbearable pain. Behavior 
increase alcohol intake, withdrawing from activities, isolating themselves from friends and family, visiting or calling people to say goodbye, sleeping too much or too little, and the mood, depression, anxiety, loss of interest, irritability, humiliation, shame, agitation, relief, and agitation, relief, and, and sudden improvement. So it's like it goes up and down um, the mood. And I, for me, how can, where do I feel? Oh, increased use of drugs. Yes, Mary Jane was my best friend during that time. Like the urge and the crave was, that was my escape. That was my coping mechanism then. And the talk, for me, it was more about, I want to disappear. But I never let it go to like, I want to like, I just wanted to not be where I was at the moment. I didn't want to be in Tallahassee. I just wanted to disappear and don't tell anyone. But the only thing that I, that I was worried about was my mom. And I was like, if I do go, cause I, like I said, I didn't, I wasn't thinking about dying per se I just wanted to disappear and not be around people for a while and the only thing that I was worried about is like my mom like what is my mom gonna think I don't want to hurt my mother so I, I guess that's the that's the only thing that kept me pushing but it was hard it was hard it was hard it was hard like waking up going to school and seeing people and not matching their energy it is difficult. Um, I know it's difficult for those that may have to deal with that person, but that person is also having difficulty dealing with themselves. And one of my sisters, Kiara, big up to you. She she said in one of our Bible studies that the Goliath in our mind, sometimes the Goliath is our mind. Sometimes the battle in our mind is the, the is the Goliath that we have to fight, is the biggest battle that we have to fight. And it's true because once it's hard and it takes a lot of, sometimes you don't have the positive words, the positive um, affirmations from yourself and you're going to need to get it from somewhere else. And that's what helped me get out of my depression. I started going to church like, I started going to church. I sought therapy. I sought therapy. I started going to church and I started to listen a lot of um, Les Brown and T.D. Jakes around that time. And that's what helped me. Like in the morning time, that's what I listened to. And yeah, I read my Bible. Like I was really, I was in church, like, except for Mondays, but all the other days I was going and that's what I needed to help me go through it. And for some, it might not be that. I'm not going to be here to push the, to push church on you to push God on you but that's what helped me and I do believe you know God is intentional in things that he does so even in that like trust him like seek him and I in during that season too I also pray that God would place the right people in my life and he did and they were they didn't even know I was going through to be honest like they just saw me and they didn't know me from before and I had lost a lot of weight too Mary Jane was my best friend at that time so I got really small and but being friends with them I started to go to the gym I started doing different stuff and I was pretty much involved in church and I started also volunteering so finding a, an activity outside of you like being able to help others really helps Yes. So being able to help others really helps you to feel better. Feels good to do good. To prevent anything from happening, I am recommending that you get involved in doing other things or like maybe travel, depending on what the restriction is for you. Maybe spend your holidays with some friends. Like do something to keep you, to keep you busy, to keep your mind off of, off of things because Sometimes once one sometimes once the thoughts come, it's hard for you to stop it. If you notice that a loved one may be going through something and you notice some of the symptoms or the behavior based on the slide, be kind to them and be very patient with them because they are also battling with themselves. As much as you like 
oh my gosh, they're doing the most, but don't give up on them really and truly. Just be there for them. Show the act of kindness. People go through things and people have been through things that you don't even know their story, you know? So please during the holidays, enjoy yourself, be safe and take care of yourself. That's the most important thing. Like put you first, your mental health first before you put anyone else before you. You cannot be of help to anyone if you are not 100, you know? So if the more, the best you that you are, you then you can be an, an assistant to other people. That's it for today's video. Thank you all for watching. Again, please, please, please take care of yourself. Take care of your mental health. And leave a comment if you guys enjoy the content, if you believe that it was, that it's useful to you. I'd really like to hear from you. Please leave comments, guys. Don't just watch the video. And like the video, please. Thank you in advance. I love you all. Have a good night. Um, have a good night because I am filming this in the night. But have a good day, afternoon, morning, whenever you do watch the video. Thank you all again. Bye. Love you.